and nowhere more so than here in Southwest Ireland. The potato came to Ireland early. One legend suggests potatoes were washed ashore with the wreckage of ships from the Spanish Armada. More likely, it was brought by Spanish fishermen to the small ports along the southern Irish coast. However it arrived, the potato and Ireland seemed to be made for each other. One of the advantages of the potato is that it would grow on poor, thin and acidic soils when other crops uh, wouldn't grow. But an even greater advantage was, in these conditions, that if you had seaweed available in great quantities, and also uh, the local sand, which was calcareous with lots of seashell uh, in it, that would actually give very abundant crops. And that meant that poor people, uh, people living on marginal soils in remote areas, began to rely more and more on the potato. It seemed to spell uh, abundance, and uh, the dependence, therefore, was great. All the good land in 17th century Ireland was owned by absentee landlords. But the potato enabled a family of five or six to survive on less than an acre, eating nothing but potatoes moistened with a little milk. The population soared, increasing fivefold in a century. But then in 1845, something terrible appeared in the potato fields. A brown spot, it's whitened and eaten quite more than it. A blight destroyed almost the entire crop. The great Irish potato famine had begun. Look here at our parish church, and it's a nice parish church. I think it's a simple pre-famine church built around 1835. Joining historian Louis Cullen in a search for evidence of the impact of the famine is Father Hickey, who discovered in this parish church a document of unusual poignancy. Well, Louis, I will show you our parish records here in the parish of Affidown. They begin around 1822 and they go on to 1866. Here we have a very significant entry by the parish priest, Father Troy, written in the height of the famine. It reads, A frightful famine and feeble year, alas. Hundreds dying weekly. No marriages or baptisms. So dependent was the population on the potato that when the crop failed entirely for two years in a row, the dead in some communities were so many they were simply dumped into pits. The other were then all thrown in in various ways, heaped in, thrown in, no cup. The memory of the victims of the famine, 1845, 48, whose coffinless bodies, bodies were buried, buried in this plot. plot. This is one of the most famous songs of the famine, still sung in pubs of Southwest Ireland, where the famine was most severe. The song is the Ballad of Skibbereen, and it's being sung here in the town of Skibbereen, in memory of those who left. Because tenant farmers could no longer pay their rents, thousands were evicted. The British government finally began to provide relief, much too late to save many. A million died in the famine. Over a million more left their land for good. Many of the emigrants headed for America, 
where they and their descendants would never forget the failure of the British government to help them. Hey,